Lift every voice and sing till earth and people that you'll hear from today, and we thank you for coming here to celebrate Juneteenth. How many of you were here last year? And what a difference a year has made, right? Yeah. When we were here last year, we were talking about Juneteenth becoming a state holiday, right. and then the possibility of a federal holiday. And if you remember, Senator Maki was said, you know, we're looking at it, we're moving it along. So this, today, Juneteenth gives a testament to the power of individual Amen. civic engagement. Yeah, yeah. There's a poem that I think kind of um, almost gives a testament to, uh, to today, and it is simply this. I am only one. On. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. And I will not let that, what I cannot do, interfere with what I can do. I am only one, but I can do something. And each of you who were here last year, what we asked you to do was contact your state reps to see about it becoming a state holiday. So even if you're not one that didn't do it, and I'm, I'm believing all of you did, because it happened. So give yourselves a hand. <laughs> Civic engagement is important. And just happy to, um, I'll ask our dais, you can please be seated, except for you, um, okay. you're going to be speaking. If you'd like to sit in that front row there, please, thank you. Again, give our dais a hand. You're going to hear from them, and we're excited about their presence. In 1776, July 4th, when America was celebrating its independence from Great Britain, it was indeed independent but at the same time, it was holding a numerous of its citizens as slaves. So it wasn't until almost 200 years later that African-American enslaved persons were given the status of being free. Now we know that that was a beginning, right? Because of what continues even to this day. So we know that free, meant that they were free on paper, right? But Jim Crow, redlining, all the kind of restrictions that put in place to make um, being African-American in America, quite frankly, uh, exhausting, exhausting, right? The fight is for everything, fighting for, fill in the blank, the right to vote, the right to live in decent and quality housing, the right to a public education that prepares you beside for factory work, right? The right to be able to live, all of these rights still fighting. So we thank you, and if we had to say that Juneteenth has a meaning, one meaning for Juneteenth is that education is important. I'm an educator, so of course I'm biased, right? But if we think about Juneteenth, those people did not know that they were enslaved, right? The ones who kept working for two years after the Emancipation Proclamation was issued on January 1st, 1863, and they continued to work until June 19th, 1865, the main reason they did not know. They did not know. And it's saying that when you get knowledge, knowledge is power. And I would stress particularly to those of you young people that power is neutral, meaning it doesn't have a face to it. It only becomes what you give. Every day, 
power is either being used by you or against you, period. You're either using your power or some other power is being used against you every single day. So keep in mind that you want to empower yourself, right? Anyone that has left, I believe, just being as biased, no one that's black should drop out of school. Ever. 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 That right for you to have education has been paid for with blood, sweat, and tears. And if we think about the harm that came from people not knowing, you should never drop out of school. And so I do want to say, if you are someone that has dropped out of school, if you would like to get your diploma, please contact the Brockton School System and ask about the Edison Academy. If you would like to get your GED, the Adult Learning Center, and also Massasoit Community College has GED programs. The point is that there is something for everyone to continue your education. You owe it to yourself and to our ancestors. And right now I'd like to call up um, Amy Winston, who is serving as a co-coordinator. She would come quickly. That would be great. Hello and welcome. We are here to acknowledge Juneteenth. Black America's Emancipation Day. What is Juneteenth? Juneteenth commemorates the day when the news of emancipation, of the Emancipation Proclamation signed by President Lincoln in January 1863 reached enslaved people in the deep south of Texas. This date marked the effective end to legal shackled slavery of black people in the United States of America which was June 19, 1865. Although elated to be free, many were still angry that they were kept in bondage two and a half years beyond the necessary date. Now imagine your employer making you stay two and a half hours after your shift ended and not paying you and just without your, your cons consent. Now imagine having never been paid and working yourself nearly to death in brutal conditions for two and a half years longer than you needed to. The Negro that was enslaved in this country showed resilience and endurance, fighting to survive and cast their lineage into the future. To, the enslaved, to be enslaved, according to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, means to lose freedom of choice and action. Thank goodness you cannot fully enslave the mind. While enslaved, the Negro mind continued to expand and produce. Much of the industry, foodways, clothing, machinery, and music enjoyed today were developed by these men and women. Yet rarely did they receive any credit. Here are just a few things conjured by the mind of Negroes enslaved in this country. The wood four-post bed was invented by Henry Boyd, a slave. Peanut butter was invented by George Washington Carver, a slave. The dustpan was invented by Lloyd P. Ray, a slave. And the corn husk broom, the precursor to our everyday broom, was invented by Ebar, a slave here in Massachusetts. A tobacco curing process that enabled the creation of cigarettes, a multi-billion dollar industry product in this country, was invented by a slave by the name of Stephen Slade. If I were to list the agricultural con con contributions of the enslaved Negro, we would be here all night. When all of their work as legally enslaved people was complete, many freed Negroes were promised 40 acres and a mule, land that would be sort of a payment and a start of a new life. During Reconstruction, the period immediately following the Civil War, Congress passed and enforced laws that pr promoted civil and political rights for Negroes across the South and the country. Negroes eagerly took up the rights, opportunities, and responsibilities of citizenship. 700 men served in elected public office, among them two United States Senators and 14 members of the United States House of Representatives. Another 1,300 black men and women held appointed government jobs things were looking up. However, it was not long before white Southerners, angered by their loss in the Civil War, formed white supremacist militias to beat back the progress made by blacks. The most notable of these militias is the KKK. For the following 150 plus years, groups like this worked to dismantle as many black efforts towards peace and parity as they could. 
Of the few blacks that received their 40 acres and a mule, even fewer were allowed to keep it. Many found their properties burned and otherwise destroyed. Between 1877 and 1950, nearly 4,000 Negro bodies were lynched. Those who were freed from enslavement on Juneteenth and countless other Negroes before and since have given their bodies, their family, their heritage, even their lives to the fields and factories of this country for centuries. In spite of all that the Negro gave, America has seen fit to allow for the murder of Negro men, women, and children, the bombing, burning, and destruction of entire Negro communities, and the miseducation of Negro students, as well as extreme disparity in Negro health care. Enough is enough. The time for reparations is now. Although no dollar amount can ever fully atone for the wrongs done, the issuance of reparations would acknowledge the wrongs done. Acknowledgement is the first step toward healing. So please read up on reparations and consider peti petitioning your elected officials to offer them. One way to reach out is via congress.gov, senate.gov. You can speak to the mayor and start there. But this needs to happen. Thank you and welcome. Thank you. And uh, right before um, my mayor comes, this is sort of like the official welcome. I would like us to, those of you, you should have a little card, and Kathy, you understand, everyone should have one of those on the back there. If you uh, turn that card over, you will see the first stanza of what is known as the Black National Anthem. The other sort of uh, euphemistic name for it is Lift Every Voice. So I'm going to ask in recognition of that being the Black National Anthem that those of you that are able to, aside from physical limitations, that you would stand and you would join us as my daughter begins to lead us in the song. You will pick up the tune. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the No, 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 believe me, no. I, first of all, I just want to say what a wonderful day here in the city of Champions, the city of Brockton, Massachusetts. And I want to welcome you all here. I see so many friends. And we see a lot of new faces as well. Can you believe Juneteenth is a national federal holiday? Let me say that again. Juneteenth is a national federal holiday. I want to thank Jackie and Gwen. I, I want to thank Greg Fernandes up there and Miles Jackson over here. And, BCA for coming here and the enterprises here as well and you know we see Phyllis Ellis and Joan Madden and you know we just see everybody here today but look how many youngsters are here today that's what it's about that's what it's about so you know I've said this many times so I'm the son of a history teacher my dad taught at Brockton High forever uh, from 1970 yes he was he gave you an A he told me too from, uh, from 1970 to 2001, and I, I'm ashamed to say I never heard of Juneteenth when I grew up here in Brockton Public Schools. It wasn't taught in the history. It wasn't taught in social studies. So now is a new day. Now is a new day. And I want to I want to recognize State Representative Jerry Cassidy is here, and Councilor Shirley Azak is here, and Tony Branch, our elected official, of Southeastern Regional, and Joyce Azak from the school committee is here as well. I know Senator Mike Brady's coming as well here today. So. 
we need to continue to work together in collaboration, right? When we were here last year, again, we were in the height of COVID. So the, the numbers were, 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 were minimal, but Ed Markey was here, our great U.S. Senator was here, and, 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 and that was true. We said, is there any hope in getting this, not just recognized in the Commonwealth, but in the nation? And now a year later, we're here. So I do want to just say thank you to uh, our federal delegation, House and Senate, and a great President Joseph Biden, who signed that on Thursday. Thank you, President Biden. So one of my, uh, one of my favorite things as, as mayor is to be able to give proclamations and citations and to honor, respect, and admirate historic things. And this is a historic thing. And Brockton's a historic place. Just right up the street, Frederick Douglass used to come to the Liberty Tree. Right up the street there. So again, let me read this proclamation. I do it with pride as a Brocktonian, but as the mayor of the city. Whereas June 19th, referred to as Juneteenth, commemorates the day in 1865 when all slaves were finally free after the Emancipation Proclamation was read to slaves in Texas. That reading took place almost two and one half years after the initial freeing of the slaves by said Emancipation Proclamation in 1863. Juneteenth has historic significance not for only descendants of Texas, Texas slaves, but for African Americans throughout our United States. Juneteenth serves as an important reminder of the needs for education and civic engagement. Today, June 19th, 2021, is a celebration in the City of Champions, City of Brockton, of the enduring significance of this day being the true Independence Day of African Americans in this United States of America. Now, therefore, I, Robin F. Sullivan, as the mayor of the City of Brockton, hereby proclaim June 19th, 2021, and the City of Brockton is Juneteenth, and I urge all residents here in the city, in the Commonwealth, and in our nation to join me in observing this proud day. Signed and sealed the 19th day of June, 2021. Robin F. Sullivan, Mayor of the City of Brockton. God bless each and every one of you. I am Major General Gordon Granger, and I have been given command of the District of Texas. On this day, June 19th, 19, 1865, the people of Texas are informed that in accordance with a proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. This involves an absolute equality of rights and rights of property between former masters and slaves. And the connection therefore existing between them becomes that between employer and hired laborer. Now, the original proclamation, put it this way. Hereby enjoin upon the people, so declared to be free, to abstain from all violence, unless in necessary self-defense. And I recommend to them, in all cases, when allowed, that they labor faithfully for reasonable wages. into the armed service of the United States. And upon this act, sincerely believed to be an act of justice, warranted by the Constitution upon military necessity, I invoke the considerate judgment of mankind and the gracious favor of Almighty God. Done at the city of Washington, this first day of January, in the year of our Lord, 1,863, by President Abraham Lincoln. We do have a little program, but a couple of things. We want to be respectful of the environment and did not have these all you know, over the place. I mean, I am a person, I know I like paper. When I go to church, they do the same thing every week, but I am upset if I do not get a program, okay? I know what's getting ready to happen. But, so just bear with us. <laughs> <laughs> so just bear with us. I will tell you that um, the, the Juneteenth, after the reading, you heard proclamation, there's going to be a drum salute to the ancestors. And I'd like to know, are there any...
people here that graduated 2021, you are a graduate either of high school, you're a graduate of college, or I see one, one there, graduate. Okay. So what I'm gonna is two, two of you. How many do we have? Two. So they're gonna, their their other colleagues will have to salute them because we want them to come down. Yes. So uh, my sister saw a wonderful um, tribute. So, well, just the, just those two. Okay. Well, actually, you know, say Greg, Greg, sorry, Greg, Greg. They can go up. <laughs> Greg. You know, they can go up until we're gonna do, first we're gonna do the ancestors and then the graduates. The ancestors representing the past and our graduates representing our future. So we're gonna do a drum salute. We'll start with our ancestors. What I'm gonna just ask is that people would just say out the name of an ancestor that helped with civil rights, okay? So it might be your grandmother. We don't know her, but I don't want you to shout out Granny because she made good peach cobbler, right? That's not the reason. I want you to shout out Granny because she told you she's the first in your family to vote. See what I mean, okay? So we'll have a period when they'll do the drum and just shout out the names. What I first would like to offer, I'm sorry. Right after this. Yeah, 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 I'm sorry, yeah, right after this. No, he's right here, actually, come in. Come in, right here. Okay, Nat, could you bring me a program too, please? Okay, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna ask the drummers to just begin drumming, and we'll just, so what I first, before we begin, I'd like to ask that we acknowledge with a moment of silence all of the people that lost their lives and property during the massacre in Tulsa in May of 1921, almost exactly 100 years ago. So I'd ask for a moment of silence, and then I'll ask the drummers to begin. And just please, just shout out names of other people, ancestors, those that have gone on, those that have gone on and helped in the cause of civil rights. I just wanted to make one announcement. I wanted to recognize the kids that are drumming today. These are kids from the Champion School, the Alternative School in Brockton, who have taken their time on a Saturday to come and drum with me today. So I am super thankful for them and go get them, kids. Absolutely, thank you. We are so grateful that they were, um, again, chose to be here with us um, today. So I'll ask in private, uh, if we can just do a moment of silence, and I'll be 30 seconds, and when I say ashe, which just simply means amen, we'll then have the drummers begin, and I'll ask just to begin saying out our names. And then when I say ashe, that'll signal that that part is over. And then I'll ask the 2021 20, graduates to come, to come uh, down there. And we'll salute them with the clapping, okay? So at this time, just a moment of silence for the victims of the Tulsa massacre. Ashe, and may their souls rest in peace and in power, the power that will go on through their legacy. Fannie Lou Hamer. Reverend Jemison. Reverend Jemison. Hattie Cunningham. Theodore Jackson. Gaylord Jackson. trying to get blacks to vote. John Lewis. John Lewis. Mary McLeod Bethune. Mary McLeod Bethune. Mary McLeod Bethune. Mary McLeod Bethune. 
Rayola Louisi. Barbara Jordan. Barbara Jordan. Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass. Shirley Chisholm. Shirley Chisholm. Bayard Rustin. Bayard Rustin. Mega Evans. Mega Evans. James Baldwin. James Baldwin. Coretta Scott King. Coretta Scott King. Stephen Biko. Lorraine Hansberry. Sojourner True. Sojourner True. Harriet Tubman. Stokely Carmichael. Stokely Carmichael. Angela Davis. She's still alive, but we, we, we'll, we'll take her fight. We're going to keep her going. <laughs> but she is powerful. We'll be ready. We're practicing. We'll be ready. Marvin Gaye. Zora Neale Hurston. Mahalia Jackson. Yes. Reverend C.T. Vivian. Reverend C.T. Vivian. Lena Horn. Reverend Abernathy. I'm just gonna say amen. I couldn't hear the name. Marvin Hagler. Dr. Dorothy Height. May, may we honor them with our actions. Okay, thank you, Ashe. Now, could the graduates come down? Any graduates, if you graduated 2021 from either high school, college, or or from a PhD program, any graduate program. Okay. If you graduated, please come here. And I'm gonna ask you guys, you're gonna walk over here. Now what, now my, now what we're gonna do, uh, my sister, in the African tradition of the whole village recognizes someone, my sister saw online where in an African village, the graduates, Everyone was standing and clapping for them. People were like out in the front of their houses. They kind of walked down like a little road. So symbolically, we're gonna ask our graduates. They're gonna just kind of walk from here to the other side there and we'll be clapping for you. So if everyone could stand as we acknowledge them. And we are going to honor Sydney Washington, Stephanie Jones, my youngest daughter, Shantiria. Ontario Crawford and Jada Fernandez. Okay? So drummers and two of our drummers have graduated as well, but they, they they're so in their craft. They didn't Okay. Oh they didn't. Okay. Well here we go. Drummers, we can have some more saluting for the graduates. Oh, they just clap. Oh just clap. Okay. All right, like this. I want to welcome everyone today. I got to put this a little higher. I, I hate to confess, I want to congratulate to the graduates of 2021. Let's give them another round of applause. Because I hate to confess, I graduated 41 years ago from what we used to call the new high school, which is still the new high school and is 50 years old. Imagine that. The old high school used to be right over here on Warren Avenue. And hopefully, you know, I know the council and the mayor and the city officials are looking at doing that whole block over for a nice public safety uh, facility. But I want to tell you that last year in 2020, we passed through an act of the state legislature to formally recognize Juneteenth as a state holiday. 
And, and I want to thank my good friend, State Rep. Jerry Cassidy is here because he voted on as well, and Reps Michelle Dubois and Claire Cronin as well voted for that. And I won't go into all the history because I know it's all been said, but President Biden just signed it through the act for the nation to make it a national federal holiday. So let's thank President Biden for that. And I'm just grateful to be here to be a part of this. I want to thank Jackie Jones and all the volunteers who all put this together and everyone for coming out today. Enjoy the day. It's a beautiful sunny day in downtown Brockton at City Hall. God bless you all. Thank you. Okay, and also acknowledging um, Representative Michelle Dubois. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. It, this is very important. At this time, um, Senator Mackey was going to be here with us. He was not able to. I got a call, well, a text this morning. But he, he wants some words delivered. So um, his aide, Jessica Laverty, is going to come deliver those on his behalf. Thank you all. And thank you, Jackie. Um, hi, friends. My name is Jessica Laverty. Um, for those of you who I have not met yet, I thank you very much for the honor of being here today. And a few words from Senator Markey. I'm sorry I was unable to join you in Brockton today, but I am honored to share a few words to commemorate Juneteenth and recognize the formal end of slavery in the United States. I had the privilege of joining President Biden, Vice President Harris, and my colleagues from the Senate and House to sign our legislation into law. We cannot begin to express our profound thanks to the activists and leaders who made this holiday a reality, especially Ms. Opal Lee from Texas the grandmother and North Star of this movement. She is one of those ordinary people who come along and challenges the rhyme and rhythm of our national history. She is an inspiration and a godsend to our nation. It was a momentous day in United States history, a step forward for racial equality, and a clarion call for all of us to continue our fight for true racial justice. For far too long, the story of our nation's history has been incomplete. We have failed to acknowledge, address, and come to grips with our nation's original sin of slavery and the toll it took and continues to take on black Americans. Juneteenth is the holiday that fills that gap in our history, that recognizes the wrong that was done, that acknowledges the pain and suffering of generations of slaves and their descendants, and celebrates their freedom. The celebration of Juneteenth dates back to June 19, 1865, when Union soldiers, led by Major General Gordon Granger, traveled to Galveston, Texas, with the announcement that the Civil War had ended and that the enslaved were now free. This was two and a half years after the date of President Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation. But either the news of Lincoln's order had not yet reached many, including those in Texas, or local officials simply refused to enforce it. On June 18, 18, June, excuse me, 19, 1865, Major General Granger read to the people of Texas General Order Number no. 3, the first lines of which told them clearly and unequivocally, and I quote, the people of Texas are informed that in accordance with the proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. Juneteenth celebrations followed, as did the recognition of Juneteenth as the formal end of slavery in the United States. For one way or another across the nation, for more than 150 years, the Juneteenth holiday has been observed. But it is long past time to place Juneteenth on par with other federal holidays so that all Americans in all 50 states and territories celebrate Juneteenth alongside Veterans Day, Memorial Day, and Martin Luther King Day. That is why I introduced, along with my partners in service, Senators Tina Smith, Cory Booker, and Representative Sheila Jackson Lee, the Juneteenth National Independence Day Act to finally make Juneteenth a federal holiday. We have a long road towards justice and equality in the United States, and we cannot get there without the recognition of our nation's true history. Our country is in the midst of a long overdue reckoning, a reckoning that goes well beyond 
seeking accountability for disparate treatment and mistreatment of black and brown Americans. The disparities and injustices that black and brown Americans face every day in this country reflect the unfulfilled promise of a nation built upon a nation notion that all are created equal. And it has its roots in our nation's original sin, slavery, a crime against humanity that we have gone far too long failing to acknowledge or dress or come to grips with. It is time to move past. It is time to pass real voting rights reform so that every person across the country, regardless of the color of their skin, is able to make their voice heard in our electoral system. It is time to ensure economic, health, and environmental justice for communities of color across the country. It is incumbent, thank you, it is incumbent upon all Americans to truthfully, truthfully acknowledge and understand our past and how it affects our present and will leave its mark on our future. Making Juneteenth a federal holiday will not right the wrongs. It will not fix the past or cure what remains broken, but it is an important step. It is the truth of our history and the missing half of the story of our nation's freedom and independence. I could not be happier that this week, President Joseph Robinette Biden signed our legislation into law. The Juneteenth National Independence Day Act gives recognition and voice to those who suffered and finally makes a holiday of this day of celebration, liberation, and hope. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you. What I'm gonna ask right now, um, we have some readers. Um, they're going to read and then they will identify who they are, okay? So, they, I mean, I'll introduce their real name, but they're reading on behalf of someone historical. So we have our first reader is Gwen Knowles, my sister. Good afternoon. After we paid the fine among us, we continued on to Ruleville, and Reverend Jeff Sonny carried me four miles in the rural area where I had worked as a timekeeper and a sharecropper for eight years. 18 years. I was met there by my children who told me the plantation owner was angry because I had gone down, tried to register. After they told me, my husband came and said the plantation owner was raising Cain because I had tried to register. And before he quit talking, the plantation owner came and said, Fannie Lou, do you know? Did Pap tell you what I said? And I said, yes, sir. He said, well, I mean that. Said, if you don't go down and withdraw your registration, you'll have to leave. Said, then if you go down and withdraw, said you still might have to go because we're not ready for that in Mississippi. And I addressed him and I told him and I said, I didn't try to register for you. I tried to register for myself. I had to leave that same night. Fannie Lou Hamer, voting right activists testifying before Congress in 1963 about the brutality committed against blacks trying to register to vote in Mississippi. And she will be followed by our bishop, the bishop. Uh, <laughs> and also a school committee, Southeastern School Committee representative, uh, Bishop Tony Branch. A moment of personal privilege, give God a hand clap. I'm sorry, heaven didn't hear you. 
Give God a hand clap. If y'all don't mind, uh, listen, I'm a preacher, and I know that we had a moment of silence, but I, I always pray before I speak, so give me a moment. Father God, in the name of Jesus that I serve, Lord, I'd ask that you bless the people in this place today. I ask that you bless all that have given their words and all that are coming after me. May your glory be served in this place today. Amen. Amen. Repeat after me. A bridge. A bridge. God can't hear you. A bridge. A, bridge. A beating. The black, the black vote made in Alabama, made in Alabama. A, bridge. a bridge a beating a beat. the black vote, the black vote. Made, in made in Alabama amen a few people excuse me a few innocent children of God some carrying only a bedroll a few clutching a simple bag a plain purse a backpack were inspired to walk 50 dangerous miles from Selma to Montgomery to demonstrate the need for voting rights in the state of Alabama. On that day, on that day, 600 people marched into history, walking two by two down this sidewalk. We must use this moment to recommit ourselves, to do all we can to finish the work there is still work to be done. Repeat after me. There's still work to be done. We must keep the faith. Keep our eyes on the prize. We must go out and vote like we've never voted before. Some people gave more than their blood. They gave their lives. Representative John Lewis speaking in 2015 at the ceremony of the Edmund Portis Bridge commemorating the 50th anniversary of Bloody Sunday. Near that same bridge in 1965, where he and others were beaten for trying to register to vote. For trying to register to vote. Repeat after me, a bridge? A, bridge. a, beating. a beating. The black vote. The black vote. All, made in All made in Alabama. And uh, thank you. And he'll be followed by my daughter, Stephanie. My youngest daughter is how to leave. That uh, she's right. here. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> These are new laws that respond to an increase in voting by people of color by constricting, removing, or otherwise harming their ability to access these prerequisites. It doesn't say brown and black people can't vote. It simply says we're going to remove things that we saw you use to your benefit. We're going to make it harder for you to access these opportunities. For me, defending the right to vote is not just about defending it for people of color. My push is that we should have expansion of the right to vote for every community that faces barriers, including the disabled, those who are returning, citizens released from prison, the poor, young people. Unfortunately, the targets tend to be those very same communities. And thus, most of the work that I do is about lifting up their voices and protecting their right to vote. Voting rights advocate Stacey Abrams being interviewed by the Associated Press on April 9th, 2021. So you have heard, I'm sure it's said, the more things change, the more they stay the same. So we're looking again, 100 years after Tulsa. We're looking at the intentional dismantling of the right to vote, particularly by black and brown citizens. We cannot let up. We cannot let up. People say that there's no rest for the weary, well, I am thankful that there is no rest for the wicked either because we keep them on the run. So at this time, water, I was just thinking that, I said, we had some water coming, but I guess it didn't get delivered. But see, ask and you seek and you shall find. So grateful to Brian, where's Brian? Brian, so Jackie, that water's been here. So that water is here, anyone? Why don't we just take a little break now, people can get it, we have more. People need to get a bottle of water, they're at two sections. 
please? If anyone needs to move, you can do that. Okay. Uh, what are we right now? We are having a presentation by a middle school student um, here uh, in Brockton. And I would say that we did have our intention to have an essay contest. It was close to the end of the year, so things just, you know, the things didn't sink. They didn't line up in order for us to have the full-fledged contest. But I knew um, this particular middle school student, I know that she's creative, and I said, will you sort of, she's gonna be the ambassador for middle school students of Brockton. So I'm gonna ask that, put your hands to welcome Miss Esther. Gabrielle Calixted. And so we please just give her the honor. She uh, speaks a little soft, although she has big, you know, big ideas and she's big dreams. She has a soft voice. I'm asking we just honor her with your attentive listening. I'm a teacher, so I want to put on your listening ears, please. Thank you. What does it mean to be free? I don't know what that... What does it mean to be free? I don't know what that means because being black or brown, some people stare at us all around. I think we are ground, but I don't like that sound. But hopefully one day we'll be free. Even though we try, it's never our best. But when they cry, we have to care and let them rest. There are the only ones who are going to be free. Freedom, I've heard great things about you, but I might not get to experience it since reality is not attached to you. I've said it once, I've said it twice. Freedom, I know you're there. And when you come, we will all scream and shout and say it out loud. Freedom, don't let us hang. We know you're here, come out. Now we need you here. Freedom, were you ever here or is it just a, or are you just a myth since you disappeared? But today on Juneteenth, we claim freedom. <laughs> Amen, please give her a hand. She said, on today, we claim freedom. And now it is our intent, so just to give you an idea, again, those of you that need a program too, so our intent was that this kind of ceremonial pack would be wrapped up right around three, and that the rest of the time is really just for celebrating. We'll have music. Please go to our vendors. We have Registration to Vote, sponsored by the NACP. We have a book vendor, and we have a young lady that does her own homemade soaps, lotions, and bath things. So we'd like you just to walk around. We have more water, plenty, but that's really, Juneteenth is really to be part of a celebration. So we'll conclude with this. So right now, um, we are going to have a poem on reparations. I'll ask Ms. Sydney Washington to please come down. Our spoken word artist, again, clap for her as she comes. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? No? Okay. This is why I asked first. Can you hear me better now? Oh, okay. Hello, my name is Sydney Washington. For those that don't know me, I apologize. I'm gonna talk a little bit while my great grandmother makes her way here. She's never seen me perform an original piece before. So you will wait the two minutes while she makes her way over here, okay. Um, thank you. Um, I just wanted to take a moment. Um, my poem, as we said, is about reparations. For those who are unclear as to what reparations are, excuse me, reparations are the making of amends for a wrong one has done by paying money to or otherwise helping those who have been wronged. While it is important that we as a people vote, it is important that we vote for the correct things. It is important that the bills and the issues that are important to us as a community are what we are going out there voting for, especially when we put these people into office to support our own interests. Correct? Correct. All right. So now she's made her way over here. I will begin. Oh. My poem is called Financial Advice. They tell you money makes the world go round. Last time I checked, it was on the backs of black people that this country was built up from the ground. They tell you, don't spend your money all in one place and bombed out to financially set back an entire race. 
They tell you money doesn't grow on trees. Well, baby, neither do black bodies. They tell you, put your money where your mouth is. It took two years for news of freedom to reach across the Southlands. They tell you, scared money don't make no money. I can't tell you how many of your ancestors spent their nights running. They tell you, you can't take your money to the grave. During Middle Passage, black people were throwing themselves to the waves. They tell you a penny saved is a penny earned. A reparations check could never equal a life as far as I'm concerned. They tell you the best things in life are free. Well, when do black people get liberty? Thank you for your time. So we are actually on the, on the little card that Amy prepared, it's so wonderfully done, that has the Juneteenth Pledge. So on one side, you had the Black National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing. On the other side of that is the Juneteenth Pledge. But before we do the pledge, which will close us out, um, Mr. Phil? John. John Jasinskis is going to tell you about an event that's happening for Frederick Douglass. Okay, before everyone um, leaves, I'd like to invite everyone here to a great annual event that we do in the Frederick Douglass Garden. In case I mean, everyone doesn't know, it's at the top of Legion Parkway, right in back of the Firestone Building. Messiah Church. Uh, and uh, near Messiah Baptist Church. And what we do each year is Frederick Douglass's famous anti-slavery abolitionist speech that he gave on July 5th, 1852, uh, which is very unpopular at that time. He was an escaped slave, and what he was saying uh, to the audience at that time was actually illegal, okay? Uh, but he was a brave man. Uh, as the mayor mentioned, he made a stop here in Brockton, several stops uh, from what I understand. And each year we do his speech, and the way it works is everyone does the speech in either English, if that's the only language they know, or in, the, uh, in, in your native tongue, in your, uh, in your language of your ancestors. I happen to be Lithuanian, and my spoken Lithuanian isn't that great, but I, I do a, a paragraph in Lithuanian. So I'd like to invite everyone. Um, the date is Sunday, June 27th, uh, a week from tomorrow at the Frederick, Frederick Douglass Garden, and the speech starts at 3 p.m. Uh, it's free and it's open to the public. I'd love to see everyone there. Thank you very much, and thank you for a great event here. Thank you. And if you go to Harambe, to our website, we will have that event and the date on it. Not our website, our, our Facebook, with my daughter. Our Facebook page, we'll have that on there. So at this time, um, on the back again of your little program, uh, not program, mm -mm. your little song, if you flip over, you will see the Juneteenth Pledge. And what we talked about, um, those of you that know me or my sister, my family, one thing we're about is action. Like, it's all right with words, talk, right? But they mean nothing that's not followed up with action. So for our John Lewis Day, some of you may remember, we did the challenge of within three days, you were to do something that would symbolize the work of John Lewis. It could be going to meet a new neighbor, whatever it is. So here, for this action step, I'm gonna give you one that's definite, and then you can hopefully follow with your own. One step that we'd like you to take is, as Amy mentioned earlier, contact our state senators. So our state senators, mean those in Washington, Senator Maki and Senator Warren. We need you to contact them to tell them to push in the reparations bill, it is going to come. Sheila Jackson Lee, if any of you have seen her, know her, I mean, she has tight braids. You can tell she does not play, okay? She does not play, not a hair out of place. She does not play. She has been pushing this, so it is going to happen. Just like I know there was someone saying, oh, they're never gonna have that Juneteenth in Massachusetts. Here we are, okay? So 
please contact your state, our state senator. I mean, I feel we're fortunate. Our state senators are kind of already with the program, but I want you to still make it your step. Contact them, and you can go, as Amy mentioned, congress.gov, but you can also just Google their off Google the D.C. office for Senator Warren, and you'll get her phone number, and please do so, okay? So let's stand with the Juneteenth Pledge, and we'll see if Amy will lead us in it. Do you have yours? So the way that it'll work, it'll do from the old-fashioned way. It's called line by line. This kind of goes to when slaves could not read, there might have been only one or two in the bunch that could, so they would say a line, and then everybody would say a line after. So our pledge is short, but Amy will read a line, and then please um, repeat it after her. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. This is our emancipation affirmation. It's on your slip, your bookmark. I am, and state your name, I am Amy Winston. I walk in greatness. That is my choice. I can make a difference with the power of my voice. I feel like we should say that one more time so we make sure we understand it now that we know how to do it. I am Amy Winston. I walk in greatness. I walk in greatness. That is my choice. That is my choice. I can make a difference. I can make a difference. With the power of my voice. With the power of my voice. Thank you. Thank you. Remember that. Amen. So uh, that concludes um, uh, our formal program, but I just wanted to say where maybe Miles will have to kick us off. In addition to being the 100th anniversary of the Tulsa massacre, it is also, we'll say on a good note, it is the 50th anniversary of the iconic song by Martin, uh, Martin Luther King, by Marvin Gaye. <laughs> What's going on? All right. So just celebrate. We'll be here for about you know another hour. There's water for the children. There are bubbles. There are hula hoops. We'll see about celebration. I really and I really would like to ask that if there's someone here that you're sitting next to, this is the Baptist in me. If you're sitting in someone that you don't know, just say hello to them. I know pre-COVID we're not necessarily handshaking, but you can kind of do a little Wakanda bow or something. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Enjoy yourself this hour. Check out our vendors. Thank you.